As always, please pause the video and reattempt the question, or at least reread it before moving on. In part A, we have a series combination of capacitors. So we've drawn a little diagram to represent that. We have a potential source or a battery marked delta V, and then we have two capacitors connected in series, and we've marked them C1 and C2. For the purposes of this question, we can call the first capacitor C1, and the second capacitor can be our C2. Now when two or more capacitors are connected in series, it turns out that you can combine them into a single equivalent capacitor whose capacitance will equal CEQ. So what we're going to do is combine these two capacitors into a single equivalent capacitor, and the capacitance will now become CEQ. And we can calculate CEQ by obeying this formula for series capacitors. So we can begin by writing the formula down here. 1 over CEQ is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. Now again, the values of C1 and C2 were given, 2.5 microfarads and 6.25 microfarads. So we'll have 1 over CEQ equals 1 over 2.5 microfarads plus 1 over 6.25 microfarads. I recommend picking up your calculator and entering that into it. So 1 divided by 2.5 plus 1 divided by 6.25 is 0.56. Then to continue solving, what I like to do is I like to put a little 1 underneath the 0.56 and then I cross multiply. So I'll have 1 times 1, which gives me 1. And then I'll go the other way too, 0.56 times CEQ will be 0.56 CEQ. And finally, to solve for CEQ, I'll divide both sides by 0.56. And when I do that, I get an equivalent capacitance of approximately 1.79 microfarads. Now, moving back to the picture, and indeed the question, we had to calculate the amount of charge on each capacitor. Now the relationship between charge, potential difference, and capacitance is given by this equation right here. So we already know that the equivalent capacitance is 1.79 microfarads, we just determined that, and we know that the potential difference supplied by the battery is given in the question, and that was 6 volts. So we can fill in 6 volts right here, this equation shows us that we can easily calculate the charge Q on this equivalent capacitance. Why don't we multiply both sides of this by the delta V so it cancels out on the right hand side and we can see that the charge, capital Q, will equal the delta V times C. So we'll go ahead and plug in our known values. We have 6 volts times the 1.79 microfarads when we process this calculation, we're going to get about 10.7 for our charge. Notice the unit here will be in microcoulombs as opposed to coulombs because we used micro for farads. So our unit will be also in micro, 10.7 microcoulombs. Now it does turn out that when you have an equivalent capacitor that is derived from series capacitors, then the charge on those series capacitors is also the charge obtained for the equivalent capacitor. So that's kind of a mouthful, but basically what we're saying is that C1 will equal 10.7 microcoulombs, and so will C2 equal 10.7 microcoulombs. So these would be the correct answers for part A. Moving on to part B, which will turn out to be a little bit more straightforward. This time we're going to connect the capacitors in a parallel combination. So if they're connected in a parallel combination, we'll still have the battery that we can mark delta V, but this time the capacitors will be connected in the following manner. And again, we might call this one C1 and this one C2. And it turns out this is easier because whenever you have capacitors connected in parallel, then the potential difference supplied by the battery, which you'll recall was 6 volts, will apply for both each individual capacitor separately. So in other words, for C1, the potential difference is 6 volts, and for C2, the potential difference also is 6 volts. 
So we can go back to the equation that we derived earlier in which Q was equal to delta V times C. And we can calculate Q1 by taking the six volts and multiplying it by the 2.5 microfarads that we could assign for C1. And when we multiply these, we get 15 microcoulombs. And then same kind of idea for the other capacitor, we can call this Q2. This will equal the potential difference of six volts times the capacitance of 6.25 microfarads. And when we multiply these together, we're going to get uh, 37.5 microcoulombs for the charge on the second capacitor of part B.